It's time we answer a question on your stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. I'm going to look at Dye and Durham. We've got a number of questions on this company. And speaking of companies they've had, you know, in the tech decline, had significant decline. I think it's down uh, 67% this year. Dye and Durham, limited, symbol DND on the TSX, trades $14.08. $928 million market cap, pays a 0.56% yield. Uh, Diane Durham is a provider of cloud-based software and technology, including legal software and data and payments technology solutions designed to improve the efficiency and increase productivity for legal and business professionals. The company is executing on a growth by acquisition strategy. So between 2013 and 2020, the company performed 13 acquisitions, grew from a few million in revenues uh, to over 300 million US per year. Since the summer of 22, the company has been on 2020. Sorry, the company has been on an acquisition spree, adding seven major acquisitions for more than 1.15 billion Canadian dollars. And one, uh, which I'll talk about more in a second, it chased over 12 months, will not be proceeding. The company is also now being forced to sell one of its acquisitions due to a competitive review. The sale will be of the company's July 2021, $156 million acquisition of the TMG Group. Now, perhaps the company will close a winning deal. It, its balance sheet could use it, but... The market now knows that DND is forced to sell this company and M&A conditions have deteriorated. So this is something to watch closely to see if they get their money back on that transaction. Acquisition, this challenge that they've had. Well, 12 months ago, they agreed for a $2.9 billion acquisition of a company called Link Administrative Holding Limited. It's a publicly listed Australian firm which provides services to the superannuation administration industry. Uh, what is superannuation? Uh, it's basically Australian for a retirement fund offered by an employer. Now, the deal was trimmed to $2.5 billion in July. Uh, after renegotiation. And once again, it did not move forward at that number. A third offer was tabled essentially uh, for DND trying to buy Link, just a part of Link uh, for a lower price, but it was rejected. Now, in our opinion, given the valuation to be paid for Link, DND may have dodged a bullet. Additionally, with the shrinking equity value in DND's stock and the higher price of debt and the amount of leverage on the company's balance sheet, the link acquisition looked like D&D overextending itself almost from the start. So let's see how this company did in its first quarter of fiscal 2023. Revenues were 120.2 million. That's up 7% from the same period last year. Adjusted EBITDA was 64.4 million. That's up 3% from the same period last year. And then net loss was 11.5 million. The balance sheet, DND has a total debt of $1.16 billion. While it produces solid cash flow, this is high for a company with a market cap that is just sub $1 billion. We note the company has $878 million roughly of floating rate debt. And that debt rate, the rate on that debt, has increased significantly since it's entered into that debt in December 2021. At that time, it was likely paying in the range of 5 to 6%. Today, it's likely in the range of 9 to 12%. That will cut into cash flow uh, over time. Our take here. On the surface, DND trades at approximately five times trailing cash flow, which appears attractive. But given the significant debt for this company uh, and a company of its size, we would use enterprise value to capture this in the ratio. Thus, DND trades at around nine times enterprise value to operating cash flow. My issue here would also center around the lack of visibility to organic growth. It's great to grow via acquisition, levering up your balance sheet, um, but it's a difficult to game to a grow by acquisition if you acquire uh, businesses that have limited growth. Using debt to do so in a rising rate environment is even more challenging. If you generate cash flow and patiently use it to acquire, that is a different equ equ equation and one that can be 
easier to succeed at, but it's actually rare to find a company do that in the public markets for a variety of reasons. Another near term uh, or mid term, near and mid term concern is that 68% of revenue has exposure to real estate, real estate uh, transactions in Canada, the UK, Ireland, and Australia for the company. The company itself called out an extremely challenging real estate market in Canada in its last quarter. And this was as at the end of September 2022. The sector has worsened to a degree since that time. Finally, I will point out the company withdrew its fiscal 2023 adjusted EBITDA target, citing the deteriorating macroeconomic trends, which are resulting in lower number of real estate transactions on the markets in which the company operates. There is a case to be made with, with the solid cash generation of its core business. D&D is intriguing as its share price continues to pull back. But given the near-term headwinds in its market, the high floating debt levels, in a rising rate environment and lack of significant organic growth, or at least visibility on that right now. We are not buyers. We would not be buyers of DND. And we've answered that question since it traded in the $50 range and said, nope, um, we just didn't see the value there. You know, it's starting to be interesting. I do know, Tumpy, I do know too, the company did a substantial course issuer bid where it, bid 150 million for its shares um, in this current range uh, recently. I, I mean, I do question a little bit spending 150 million when you've got you know 800 plus in floating rate debt uh, on the balance sheet. I know they do, you know, they do generate significant cash flow. It does look like a core business, which which should continue to do that. But you know, reducing debt to me would be uh, part of the plan here. They want to continue to be acquisitive going forward too. So I don't think I'd be using my share price as as a, a means of doing that if they think they're buying it back. But um, you know, to me, adding more debt to the balance sheet is a difficult proposition. Is too too. They believe they can, but uh, for me, you know, in this environment, I don't want to see too much floating debt. And uh, given their size, adding more to that.